I, I acknowledge you, ha you have opinion based on your sincere beliefs, absolutely. I just don't agree, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also Paul uh, in 1, Corinthian, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 also seems to state that uh, the end will come during his own lifetime. And he actually says that, uh, uh, that he is uh, inspired by God or sent by God. So you get the sense that what he's saying is not just his opinion, but somehow really truly reliable as someone who is sent by God. And yet it's false. So this actually questions the, uh, the authenticity or the legitimacy of Paul as an apostle at all from God. Because if you got that wrong, how can we trust Paul in anything else where he claims to be inspired or led by God? So, no, in, in 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, Paul, Paul states that, uh, uh, seems to state that he would be alive at the time of Jesus' second coming. Uh, but th this, this belief comes from God. It's not just his, uh, his private opinion. But because he was can wrong on that, yeah, 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 absolutely. No, indeed, we should look at it because I'm just quoting from memory now. Four, really? I think it's for, it could be five, uh, I'm, uh, it's in 1 Thessalonians. Let's just see if it's 1 Thessalonians 4. I doubt it. No, 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 no Paul. He has the ability to pull it Oh, yeah, it, 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 is, it is actually chapter 4. It's verse, I'll, I'll, read, I'll, I'll read it out. Well, um, uh, actually, verse 50. According to the Lord's word. So this is actually the word of God. So that this is completely reliable, he claims. We tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, we certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. So th th this this is a f uh, obviously false because we, I, Paul, didn't survive to the coming of Jesus. In fact, we're standing here 2,000 years later and he's still not come. Well, I, so, so, I apologize. So, okay. Which verse started from? 13, 13, 15. 15. 15. Oh, you can read the whole thing if you want. Yeah, 15. From, from 15, yeah? No, that, that's the point. According to the Lord's word. May I, may I, of course. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we are still alive. We are left under the coming, until the coming of the Lord. We'll, we will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Right. So we who are alive. Mm. Now, if, if, you're to, if Paul is talking only to that generation, then you are right. But Paul's letter is for all of us. We, we apply this to us. Oh, no, we who are alive. I don't think they are. You see, this is what I disagree. Paul is not writing you, for you us. Can interpret it both ways. No, but I don't and think you can. Selectively no, you see, a whole historical reading would suggest that Paul is not writing for us, he's only writing to the Thessalonians. So that the, the, It's your assumption that he's writing for people in thousands of years in the future. Paul had Paul thought the world was going to end uh, uh, pretty quickly. He had no conception of the world order continuing ad infinitum for thousands of years. So that's your reading, but Paul himself did not think that way. Well, how do you know that Paul did Because he says so. He says, again. we who are still alive. Oh, that, that's why I'm saying. That, that, that's, that's the evidence. How do I know that Paul didn't think that way? Because he also spoke to the church, which believed that they were be witnessing the, the coming of the Messiah. They, they stopped working. And he told them to go back to work. Because he didn't believe it. So, do you agree that? that is yeah, yeah, but, but don't you get the sense in that passage that... That, that, that people then living will be there on the second coming. You're ignoring another advice. I, I am ignoring. I am ignoring. ignoring. Yes, I am ignoring. You're so when right. Paul says this one, where it, where it looks to you like, yes, he's coming in that generation, but to another generation, uh, to another church, he's telling them, go back to work. God which is letter, not coming down. Which letter is this? Uh, can't be which one is that? Because you, you mentioned uh, this before, and I asked you to quote without it. Without work, you should not eat. Uh, you know, the oh, church yeah. that believed that uh, the Messiah is coming immediately. So they stopped working. So he's, he's given one uh, Thessalonians 4, right? One Thessalonians 4, 15. Yeah, but, 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 but he's in 4, 15. Yeah. If you read no, what's, what's your passage? What's your passage? No, so he wants to say that, he wants to say that, uh, for this we declare to you my word, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not receive those who are born to sleep. Let's just, go to, let's just go to the top. It says, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, mm. that you may not. It's not my resurrection. What, what is your he, he about those words? Exactly. Like anyone is not willing to work, let's not eat. Okay, but, but, but the background is not here. Okay, 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 can, you, can, you, can you read the fact? You said it doesn't... Which uh, one is it? Second Thessalonians 3. Second Thessalonians 3. Okay, so the background of this, and again, uh, you, uh, you, you go to... Bill that was helpful. Uh, could you just read the bit where you, because you, you quoted this before? You, so, 
for, for when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some of you walk in idleness, not busy at work, at busy bodies. Now such people we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Uh, yeah, well, that, that doesn't, really, doesn't really address the question of right, it coming, so, the question. so it's not really relevant. Back to the biblical um, scholars, why was this letter written? Mm -hmm. This letter was written, and this, it's not covered in this particular passage, no. but earlier. So, so, it was written mm -hmm. to believers who thought that Jesus was coming at that point in time. Yeah, so but, it tells them, and yeah, clearly, uh, yeah, absolutely. go back to work. At, at that point, but it doesn't... Yeah, which means he's but, not coming. No, no, but, but that is still compatible with the idea that during their lifetimes Jesus will come. But just, you me, just not at that, that moment. But coming back to 1 uh, Thessalonians chapter 4, for this we declare to you by the word of the Lord. So this is really trustworthy. And my point is here, this undermines <laughs> Paul's claim. This undermines well, Paul's it, claim to be a, a true apostle of God because he made a false statement about God's word. For he said, for this we declare to you, that we who are alive, so he's speaking to the Thessalonians in AD 50, probably, okay. uh, that, we, that those of us who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. Does it mean so, all of them so, are going to be alive at that time? Not necessarily. But by no means, yeah. But the point is that some of them will be, and if some of them will be, let me finish, if some of them will be, according to Paul's word of the Lord, that means it's false because yeah, well, 2,000 that, years later, well, none of them are here. None of them are alive. They all died in the first century. So this disproves that Paul is an authentic prophet. It means the Bible contains an error. And, and, and that's, I think it's fairly obvious. Let's read that passage again. So what, what he's, Paul is addressing, I do not want you to be uninformed. And then he tells them about the end times. And then he says, we, this is the end times. This is what will happen. Whoever is alive, that's what he's saying. That's another way of saying this. Yes, but, but whoever is alive doesn't mean that of us, all of us, lot, of us, lot. The, the people he's addressing are the Thessalonians so in AD 50. The he says, "We who are who are the okay. we? Who so are the we?" Does not address the, uh, no, the but who are the we? Current? He's talking about. No, wait. That's what I'm asking you. So is it okay. only exclusive it's, to the Thessalonians? Yes, not yes. The Corinthians, no. not including the He's addressing the Corinthians. He's addressing, yeah. this is the Nobody letter. Nobody has that interpretation, even in no, the early church. They, they do, because no, no, no. he's addressing the Thessalonians. Oh, show, show them the Bible. So this is not exclusive to the Thessalonians. Pressure, pressure he's saying, we are alive. He's making a general statement, whoever's alive. I'm just trying to find. Um, I'm just trying to find uh, the beginning of the letter. Just find out who he is talking to, who the addressees are. That's what right. I'm looking at now. The, because the we will. The letter is addressed to them, but this is. Well, but, but let's, let me just confirm that because this is the, the point. Because you're saying it's not just to them. Let's see what. Let's let's see who he's addressing. So this is what he actually says. This is the, the actual beginning of the NIV. Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be appeared to you. So he's explicitly talking to the Thessalonians. He said, those of us, those of us, we, we who are still alive, will not precede those who die. So someone in that group will be alive at the second coming. But that is false because they all died 2,000 years later, we're standing in Hyde Park. Okay. Therefore, Paul is not an apostle right. of God, and the Bible contains oh, an error. Can I, can I respond? Of course. Can I respond? So the less letter is addressed no, to the Thessalonians, no doubt about it. Only the them. It's only them. It was addressed to them. Yeah. But the instruction when in that is not specific <laughs> only to them. The instruction there is for everyone. Well, how do I know that? How do you know because that? Because we know that there were certain instructions only to the Thessalonians, even for Paul to say, only you guys, you know, you who are like flying, excluding the Thessalonians doesn't make sense. Because he spoke some, uh, some instructions that uh, Corinthian church. When it's specific to the church, like for example, the covering of head, etc., etc., we know it is only specific to that church. But other uh, teachings are general teachings for everyone. It's no way that he's saying that only the Thessalonian church is going to be raptured. No, that's not what I'm saying. It, it, you see, it, if, it if I sense. imagine this, it if we, if, okay, let me respond. If we, if we, if we try and read this historically, imagine I'm a, um, a, a member. Yeah, but you're of the, not addressing it. You're still saying that. Will you let me? Will you let me? Will you let me speak? Which just just let me finish. Imagine I'm a member of the church in Thessalonica in, in in the ancient world, and I get this letter from Paul. He's addressing our church. So there's about, I don't know, 20, 50, maybe 100 people. And he tells us, the great apostle Paul, that we, Paul and the church, some of us, in effect, will live to see the second coming. It may not be Paul, it may not be, it may not be any particular individual, but some of us will live to see the end. Now, the, the, now you may not be excluding the rest of mankind. I'm not, that's not really, the, it's not actually the point. The point is, uh, the point is that some, 
Well, it could be the whole of mankind, but it's still their mankind living then, living at that time. And they, I can tell you, everyone living in the first century is dead. Just said mankind. So, which means now, let's say he's from the Church of Corinth. He's from the Church of Corinth. Well, I'm mean, having an extreme interpretation that he's giving. Let me respond. So, if he's from the Church of Corinth. Oh my God, I just noticed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cameras have disappeared like a forest. Okay, so. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Um, we're on camera, we're on camera. Uh, if, if I'm from the from the Church of Thessalonica and he's from the Church of Corinth, and I say, sorry, pal, you know, this instruction there, you know, that, that we who are alive is only for me. You know, so no, you yeah, may be alive, but you're not going to be It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And you you hinted at it, it's probably for all of mankind. And that's what the right no, I, I, you is for. It's for mankind. No. It is not for the Church of Thessalonica. Okay. Though so, 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 but, but, he's Paul, Paul is teaching, okay. He's giving them a teaching. Okay. Paul is saying that some people who are alive will, will live. Okay. He's giving them a teaching probably because they had a faulty understanding of, of the end times. So that's why he's giving them a teaching, but doesn't mean it's specific to them. It's for mankind. Okay. Some the letter clearly states that some people then living, whether you want to have them just a Thessalonian, uh, the Thessalonian, uh, yeah, hang, hang a second, or anyone else you care to mention, it doesn't alter the material point. Someone then living will be alive to see the second coming. Now hang on, the problem is everyone died, that was thousands of years ago, no one is alive. Therefore, when Paul says this is the word of the Lord, he was lying and the scriptures are false, therefore Christianity, as you understand it, is actually not true. It collapses, it collapses. When he says some of you who are reading this letter, yeah. and today I'm reading it, and I might no, no, no. when the This is an anachronist. No, no, this, this, this is... I also believe that Christ will come in yeah, this, is, this is not yeah, an historical I'm reading. Because yeah. I do not know. Okay. Of that day, all right. of that day, of that day and that hour, no one knows. Yeah. Right, Jesus? You see, well, no you're, you're reading this in a... Okay, I can see what's happening. Yeah, but we're reading the, the, the Bible in different ways. I'm reading it historically. Let me explain. I'm reading it historically in its historical context and a more academic way. You're reading it as a, as a, as a 21st century Christian in a very sp spiritual way. So, so let me explain. You, you think, and many Christians do this today, it's not unusual. They think the Bible was written for them today. You think the Bible was written for people in, in 21st century America, whatever. Uh, yeah. No, it's nothing, it's, it's, no, no, it's nothing to do with the Quran. Okay, Come and come and let, let me finish. Let, no, it's not how it is. So if you put that standard Can you let me finish? We have to use the same standard. standard. No, we don't have to use the same standard. Let me explain why. Why not? Because there's a category mistake. Because okay. it's like apples and oranges. They're not the same thing. So coming back to the point, when I read it historically, I'm listening to what Paul actually said in his historical context and trying to understand what's going on. You take it out of its historical context and you see it as a free-floating uh, word for all time. Now that's a very Christian thing to do, but that's not what I'm doing. So if I read it historically, it's a big mistake, but you take it out of its context, out of its history, and you see it as a free floating word for you, everyone else in the future. It's just two different ways of reading the Bible. That's why I have a problem and you don't. That there is another way of reading it. Yes, Bible. absolutely. And, and you choose absolutely. To, to take the one that suits you. No, no. Why if you do that, that not you suits have me. To do no, no. No, if you do that, and, and it's fine if no, you no, do no, that. I don't agree at all. You, you have to do that to the Quran as well. No, no. You have to do that to the Quran. I'm not talking well. about the Quran here. It's a different subject. I'm not talking about the Quran here. Yeah, don't bring in the Quran, no, that's a different oh, subject. You have to be consistent. Way, right? well, can we, all right, we'll talk about the Quran in a minute. I want to finish this subject. But you have right? to be consistent. What no, no, is, I, no apples and oranges, they're not the same. Doing it, but no. if you're doing that, you have to do it with every other document as well. No, because this, you do, you're well, let, let me explain, let me explain why. Edition. Let me explain why. This will be my final word because I, I, this, this, oh, we're, no, we're not, no, we're not going to get, we're not getting anywhere. So you Quran, the, the, uh, and then oh, I'm going to move on. Defend your, your, your book. Go uh, on, you see, this guy is trying to uh, fake me. So, so when, let me explain this. When I started to read Paul in this way, I was a, 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 a committed born again Christian. Really, really. Uh, uh, you, okay. you see, he's trying to bait oh, okay, me. Fine, fine. If, if I can right. just continue. Committed born again. Uh, I, okay. uh, when I was studying this at university, one of my, uh, some of my okay. teachers were priests, some were pastors. Not okay. all of them were. So this is something that is accepted within the mainstream Christian church okay, that you read the Gospels and the letters historically. This is not something that suits me, uh, like, like my desires. This is something that is actually grown with, up within the church, the reading these scriptures historically. And, wh and when, I look, when I read scholars about this, many Christian scholars admit there is a mistake here in Paul, Name that he the, thought the end was coming in his own lifetime and his own... Uh, well, well, I'm not, I, I can, if you're asking me for a list of names, I can give you a list of names. So this is, this is nothing to do with... 
uh, nothing to do with my desires. This is something as a Christian we, we looked into academically. So I'm satisfied when I was a Christian that there was a mistake. This was long before I knew anything about Islam. And most scholars that I'm aware of in British universities like Jimmy Dunn at Durham, for example, uh, Leslie Holden at King's College in London, and, and others at Oxford in Cambridge, these are all ordained Christian people. They also acknowledge this problem. It's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem for them. These are professors at Oxford and Cambridge and elsewhere. It's not a Muslim desire thing. This is a Christian acknowledged problem. But if you want to read the Bible that way, you're free to do so. This is Speaker's Corner. You can do what you want. Can I respond? To Please that? do. Okay, so again, let me go back to the Church of Thessalonica, because this was addressed to the Church of Thessalonica, but it's not an instruction which is specific to them. And how do I know? Because hmm. it's a, yeah, how? A, a question which they have. And yeah. that question is not specifically unique to them, because it means that if what you're saying is right, then only the Church in Thessalonica okay. has, okay. To be, has to be... Okay, right. I'll, I'll agree I with you. I'll agree with you on that. I'll agree with you, so for the sake of argument. it is not a question yeah, yeah. that is only perta pertaining okay, to them. Okay, fair enough. So Paul is giving an instruction. So if it's not only pertaining to them then it, it is for all generations no no that doesn't follow it doesn't follow it could be other people in his time but not for you 2000 years later how do you exclude because me? it's an unhistorical because reading it's not historical as the church in thessalonica i have no, the no, same no, doubt no. so then what paul is telling me is that you know uh, some of you reading this you will be alive see, when Christ I think part of the problem is, and the rest of you, you will be but, but, in, 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 in my view, Paul did not think he was writing no, wait, scripture. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Okay, I thought you had. I thought you were finished. No, if you apply this standard of you know saying that this is exclusive to the church in Thessalonica, this is not for all time. Then you have to apply the same standard using the Quran, using the Hadith, and all those other books. No, you don't. No. Why not? Well, okay. But let, but let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Yeah, no, you see, the, 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 part of the problem. The part Part of the problem here is our, our different understanding of what Paul is doing. I, I don't believe Paul ever thought he was writing Holy Scripture. I don't think Paul believed he was writing the inspired no, Word of God. Said, this, is uh, uh, this is according to my, my reading. So, 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 so well, why does this matter? Because if Paul thought he was writing occasional letters, like he did say to the Thessalonians or the, or the uh, Galatians or Corinthians. I, I don't believe, by the way, Romans is an occasional letter, but these, this one is, 1 Thessalonians. He didn't think in his own mind, because it was just an occasional letter, he was just writing to people, not Holy Scripture, not inspired by God, not the, not the Bible, as you would call it. He was not thinking about thousands of years in the future, and where someone like you comes along and says, ah, Paul's speaking to me. I think that is an unhistorical, anachronistic understanding of Paul. So that's why I think you're making a category mistake. You think Paul was writing scripture. He, den he, de he denied, actually, in 1 Corinthians 7, he denied what he was saying was from God when he gave his opinion in 1 Corinthians 7, 12. He denied what he was saying from God. So he didn't always think that what he was writing was from God, even though you think everything he wrote was from God. And I think, I think that, that that is the difference. So can I respond to that? Yeah. So Paul himself says that all scripture is God breathed and useful for teaching. So from Paul, this is what Paul says, and you you deny that right in the very start. I think I think I think that's correct. Incorrect. Is God breathed? This is what Paul says. No, it's not. Okay. Now, Peter, it's not what Paul said. One, two Timothy three sixteen. No, you miss you misread it. <laughs> okay, can you read it? Then? Yes, I can read it from memory. Let's read it. Okay. Let's read it. Okay. So what? Okay. That, that passage... But no, let me, no, let no, me finish and I'll give you a chance to read. I thought you were going to ask me to explain. Now well, you're saying don't. No, because I wanted no. to address the other points as well. Well, well. Let me just address that 2 Timothy 3.16 point. If you read the, the letters addressed to Timothy, two points I want to make. Bear with me. Paul is, is addressing Timothy and he says in the paragraph, if you read the four or five verses before that, that you, Timothy, knew as a youth the Holy Scriptures uh, that you knew as a youth and those scriptures are inspired by God now this is referring to the Jewish Bible not to the New Testament so when you say all scripture you are you are misinterpreting it if you say this is referring to your Bible the New Testament didn't exist the New Testament didn't exist the second problem is this this is much more serious there are excellent reasons, and most academic. I know you, you don't, people don't like me saying this. Let, let, no, let me, let me finish. Let, let me finish let, because I didn't no, finish I haven't finished. Point. I said there were two points. I I, I'm, you haven't let me finish my point. Let me finish my You're second point. Away, the first point is all scripture doesn't refer to the New Testament okay. like you uh, incorrectly claimed. The context clearly suggests it's not. Secondly, there are excellent reasons for thinking that 2 Timothy is a forgery. Most scholars who are Christians today acknowledge that Paul did not write did not write 2 Timothy. 
it is a fake, I'm afraid. So the irony is you're quoting a fake to back up your claim for inspiration about a book that's not even written yet, the New Testament. So on those three counts, I'm afraid your argument falls. Let's keep our feet on the ground. Please. First, let me respond to the earlier point and complete the earlier point. Okay. So we are saying that all scripture is God breathed. The Jewish Bible, the Jewish Bible, not the New Testament. According to you, you're saying that it's not the New Testament. But Correct. He's talking low, the not shouting. That's a fake as well. That, that's a fake. So now, <laughs> you think that's a fake? Every scholar in the world thinks it's a fake. Okay. I don't know any <laughs> scholar who thinks it's a fake. You go to any academic, you all think it's fake. Please let me finish. I'm having a respect. You don't have to say they're all scholars. It's true though. It's true. It's a fact. It just happens to be the case. I am a fake. Oh dear. This is bad. It's even worse, I'm afraid. So you're saying every scholar... We'll do our best. We'll do our best. Every scholar is saying that, that this is... These are your scholars. Your scholars say it's fake. So now what, I, what I can show you is scholars that show you... This could be a little bit... Uh, uh, this is very uh, unfortunate. Uh, I, I, I'm not even going to go there. Go away, thank you. The question is, does he represent his religion? And that's... Yeah, that's uh, yeah, he does. He's 81. He's 81. He's 81. There should be a dictator on that. Oh, that, that was very, very, very short. You were saying, carry on, carry on, carry on. So, we are talking about uh, Peter. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, the teachings in, in a fake text, yeah. Now, you can say that all the scholars today, and, and again, I'm jumping, not to the first one, I have not addressed the first one. They, they do. Because that's... What it's widely accepted to be a fake. Scholars can say that, you know, they don't agree. These are your scholars. I want you to show me one early church father who said that this is fake. Yeah. Today people can stand up and say it's fake. Today people are saying Muhammad didn't exist. Would you agree to that? And they have proof I to that. You always want to bring in no Islam, don't you? We're talking about the early church. Yeah, okay. There's no existing from uh, Mecca existing at the time of Muhammad. So there are scholars who are saying that they are not there. So would you stand up and say that that's fake as well? Right. So now, you seriously want me to address this? You seriously want me to address this point? I'm very happy to. Okay, right. But, but okay. let me not. I'm not finished. I, not, let you finish. I thought you let, I thought you let me want to be addressing. Well, let me finish. Okay. Well, let me know. So let me know when I have permission to speak. Stand up and say all sorts of things. But I want a church father who said that Paul is uh, that two Timothy Sorry. is fake. I want a church father who said that all these other letters that you're saying are fake. And then I'll agree with you. The same way as you could tell me, you could come back and tell me. You know, today the people are saying that Muhammad is fake. Uh, you know, he didn't exist at that time. Uh, Mecca didn't yeah, exist you, at that you time. Said, you but you've you already me said all this. Now you're, you're, Sahaba, you're, repeating, you're, you're repeating yourself. Right. No, I think I'm going to say something new. You could tell me. You could tell me. Show me one of these people who said it, and then I'll believe. Right. Right. Well, that's a curious criteria. Okay. The reason why scholars today, modern historians, think it's a fake, and I would say 99% of the world's experts think it's a fake. No. I, 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 what I, do you mean no? I mean, I yeah. I've called for you scholars. There's only one. No, let, let me. I mean, you can, you can let me speak. Me Are you going to let me speak? Hey, 99%. Yeah. I'm only, I'm only, I'm only quoting Christian scholars here. I'm not quoting her. Uh, there's only one scholar, actually, who does think two Peters written by Peter, and that's J.N.D. Kelly, and he was a patristic scholar uh, at Oxford. He wasn't... So, so, but as I said, 99%. Uh, every, every other... If you go... If you read any standard critical introduction to the New Testament, you, you will find that two Peter is seen as a forgery. Two Two Peter, two Peter. These are all Christian scholars. Uh, and by um, well, you want names. You want names. Yes. Names that okay. work. Uh, okay. J I know, okay. I, I will give you a name. Yep. Uh, J uh, Jimmy Dunn at okay. the University of Durham. So said, said He's a professor where? of New Testament. Said what, where? So he right. said two Peter. Uh, two, uh, yeah, of course, two of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, everyone acknowledges this. This is if you knew the subject, you wouldn't be surprised. Okay. Everyone knows this. All right. Okay. Yeah. Now, well, what are some of the sorry, reasons why it's fake? For example, Peter was a fisherman who was unlettered as it says in as it says in the as it says in the book of acts these were untutored actually says it in acts no it's still a little the two peter is written in sophisticated it greek it is written with a uh, with a highly educated uh, uh, language it references it references things it's, it's, it's hard work talking over uh, people who are a loud voice. Um, and also, it refers in, in the passage uh, to uh, the, 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 the apostles as if they were a prior generation, as if some time historical distance actually occurred. He's not actually talking himself about as a contemporary of the apostles. You get a sense that he is looking back at that time when the apostles lived. But it also, uh, but it also says that he was an eyewitness to the transfiguration in chapter 2. So it's a particularly egregious forgery claimed to be present 
uh, even though other indications clearly suggest that he is not. He is dated usually to about eight, uh, the middle of the second century. That's when he's dated. Now Eusebius, the early church historian, in his book uh, gives a list of the books that are accepted. To Peter is disputed. It's not one of those that is universally accepted. Disputed. Because it, disputed. Disputed. Uh, disputed. disputed. Well, but that's what he says. I mean, it's not my view. It's his view. Because uh, a lot of people had never heard of this letter. It wasn't widely. It wasn't widely known in the early church. It suddenly appeared on the scene. It claimed to be by Peter, and it was very reluctantly accepted into the canon. It wasn't then known. It wasn't known from the beginning. So, the, the, but also, my, my biggest thing is that Peter was an illiterate fisherman. He didn't go to Galilee High School, get a degree in Greek. He could, his na native language is Aramaic. He couldn't read and write. And we know, we know from later sources that he was illiterate. It says so in the book of Acts. So this is not a letter, this is not a letter written by a fisherman. And that's the view of virtually everyone I, I've come across. And also he uses concepts like participating in the divine nature, which is Hellenistic philosophy. Again, not, not something that a Galilean fisherman a Galilean fisherman would have done. So, uh, so, so now you may disagree with these reasons, and frankly, that's fine. I don't really mind if you do. I'm just giving you that the, the overwhelming majority of your scholars, Christian scholars, believe it's a fake, and that's. I'm just telling you that's the state of the play. They may all be wrong, of course, and maybe they are, but I think they're probably right when you look at the evidence. So, when you quote the Bible, you could be quoting fake texts, of course, about two Timothy, uh, two. Right. And so two Timothy. Did, uh, we are talking about Paul. Uh, we're talking about two Peter, uh, actually. Peter, you said Do you have any, any comeback on what I've said? No. Yeah, yeah. I'm, Please. I'm addressing the point that you just spoke about. Perfect. So you said Perfect. Peter is illiterate. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You're assuming that he's illiterate. You know, no, no, it states that, that in Acts. No, it actually doesn't. says that no, in Acts. It does. It does. No, he does not. It says they are untutored. It actually says that in Acts. Let me complete. Let me complete my point. Now you're, 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 uh, you're assuming that he's illiterate. Okay, let me go with your assumption. Even though I don't okay. believe your assumption, let me okay. go with your assumption and say that he was illiterate. Yeah. Now Peter is the one who preached one of the sermons, and from that sermon alone, five thousand people were converted. Now, if he was speaking rubbish. I'm sure nobody would, be, would have been converted. He was support. He was obviously very elegant. Yeah, I'm talking about reading and writing here. Reading and writing, not preaching. Reading and writing. Can I finish? Can I finish? Can I finish? So if if Peter was Sorry, speaking, bro. and around five thousand people get converted immediately, then it obviously means. That he was quite eloquent. Oh, sorry. I'm making an assumption here because the, you made it, it means he's quite what? Eloquent in, in the language. Yeah, but it's only reading, reading and writing. Reading and writing is different. It's I, a specialized I'm to skill. That ball. Allow me to come to that. Okay. Yeah. So now, if he can speak that well, yeah. if he could speak that well to convert so many thousand people at, at one point of time, he also had a scribe. And you know that Mark wrote down for Peter. You know that, right? So Mark was writing down for Peter. So there's no um, no thing that says that Mark would not have written down what Peter said. So even if you go with the assumption that Peter was so, so you agree Peter didn't write it then? You me. agree with me Peter didn't write it then? No, well fine, we agree with each other. I said even if. I said even if you go with the assumption that Peter was illiterate, I can I will go with the assumption that Peter was very eloquent in the language and Mark was his scribe. So Mark could have written it down in very good Greek because Mark was what Mark was a scribe. But Peter didn't right? speak very good I'm Greek. Not, he was an I'm Aramaic not, speaking peasant. He didn't speak sure. Greek. No, in that Greek was the lingua franca at that time. Not in, no, not in Palestine, it was not in Galilee, not in Galilee. The, the very city of not in not, not in Galilee. Mike, so what is your point, right? He's referring to Acts 4:13. Sorry, sorry. Oh, nothing like a debate. Have you seen all these cameras? It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like it's, like, it's like TV studios, yeah. So this yeah. is what people are saying about them, right? As he said. Yeah. Don't, don't, ever, don't ever try. Don't ever try me. Don't ever try. Go try your mother, not me. I'm telling you clearly. I'm telling you clearly. And what religion? And what, and what religion is she? What, what religion is she? Sorry, I'm not orthodox. No, I, I accept she's not. 
Yeah. Um, so, but they are making her famous. Like it or not, they are making her famous. I, I don't know if they want to make her famous or not. But they're making I, her. I, oh, she's going round the uh, the back now and for more agro. When she says something, no, no, they are no, making her a hero. Listen, listen, I'm telling you, no, you I'm people just, are no, making her no, no, a hero, no, no, not no, us. Me, no, Christians me. are not making her no, a hero. No. You all are making her a hero. I don't know who these are. Are you going to run? Paul, Ready? Paul, let me finish my talk. You're going to run, Paul. Carry on. So, Paul, it's a long time. So, Peter, you're talking about Peter here. This is an assumption that you made, and I'll just read this. When they saw the courage of Peter and John, they realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. Exactly. Okay. So they unschooled. Right. No, that's not what it means. That's not what it means. No, that's, that's not what happened. But, but let, me let, me get, let me go back to his point before he moves. Let, let me go back to your point. So if you say scholars are saying that this book was a forgery, then you also have to address no. that scholars are saying that Muhammad himself is a forgery. Nothing to do with Muhammad. You always yeah, want to bring no. in uh, you other people. Are you are you we're, talking, talking, we're talking about no, two teacher. No, you're talking about you're, de you're deflecting and diverging no, because no, you're no, Let me finish. Let me finish. You're talking about somebody who's unschooled, therefore scholars are saying that he he was illiterate, he could not have written. But it's, now, not, it's one of many reasons, one of many reasons. Paul, let me finish. Again, let me make my point. You're I'm saying about that your point. person who's unschooled, so because he's unschooled, scholars are saying that he he, he could not have written, it's a forgery. Yeah, I'm I agree. talking about the lack of archaeological evidence for Muhammad, the lack of Again, archaeological evidence. Don't talk evidence about Islam. Don't talk about evidence. You always, you always, you always, you still believe, believe, well, you always want to change well, the subject. Oh, I'm not changing the subject. Yeah, you I'm are you changing the subject because you're talking about a different you religion. I'm the person that another person. Believe the yeah, 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 you still yeah. believe that Mecca was an existence. No, 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 no. Th th this, is, oh, this is very. Okay. Oh, let, yeah, let, let, let me finish. I'll just say something. No, no, he's not talking. He's on the move. Because let let finish. Finish. my final word is this. I'm going to say I'm walking away now. I'm making the comparison. Let me finish. I'm going to say something now. No, because he was talking. What I don't like about your attitude is you won't have an honest. Let me finish. An honest you discussion about New Testament. You're always bringing in whether Mecca exists in Because it's a very good case. That's even stronger case. You're interrupting. Here is just education, which is a problem. This is deflection. This is deflection from Christians. You have a very weak argument. Here is just education. You're interrupting. 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 You're